Hello and welcome to Rain Francis Art. My name is Rain. Today I am doing another art therapy day where I am just relaxing and I am going to show you how I created this seahorse basically just using dots. <laughs> I hope you join along. Let's begin. This is what I'll be using for today's painting. I'm using Strathmore watercolor paper. It's nine by 12 inches and I have it portrait today, 140 pound cold press. And for those interested, it's the 300 series. Let me put that aside. And you may see here that I have a stencil. This is a stencil of a seahorse that I found online for free and I printed it out and it's the website, ooh, is it called universalpatterns.com? I'm gonna leave a link in the description below and all of their patterns and stencils are free. You can download them and use them, it's amazing. So I'm gonna be transferring this onto my stencil. I have my pan paints today. The brand is pretty excellent. Oops, sorry, pretty excellent. I'm gonna be sticking to all bright colors. I probably won't list all the colors that I'm using in the description below because I'll be using a lot of them. I have some round brushes. I have a number four, a number two, and this tiny little one says three slash zero because I'm basically doing dots today. Dot, 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 like that. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna to do today. I have some paper towels. I have some water. And I'm going to be transferring my stencil using graphite transfer paper. Now this is white. I'm using a black one. I just don't have the packaging to show you. And there are, there are other ways that you can transfer your stencil. I'll put a link in the description below of the video that I have on that. But short, in short, what you can do is you can take, turn your stencil around and anywhere that you see the stencil, you take a graphite pencil and you just color graphite over the whole outline. Turn it around, tape it down, take a sharp pencil and go over it and that's going to transfer it onto your canvas. You could also tape it at the top and you can kind of go underneath and try to do it that way. I'm just doing it the easy way. But I am turning it around because I want my seahorse to face this way. Don't ask me why, that's just what I want. <laughs> so I'm going to move this aside for now because as we do with all of our art therapy videos, we bring out the Bob Ross cards and we want to see what wisdom Bob Ross has to tell us today. All right. This is almost my favorite part of the video. <laughs> Let's see what he has to say. Whatever makes you happy, you put it in your world. Oh, ain't that the truth, Bob? <laughs> And it's not just whatever makes you happy on your painting. Bob Ross was a great artist, but he was also a great philosopher. Whatever makes you happy, you put it in your world. And we can talk about that throughout the painting video today because it's such an important message. Okay, what I'm going to do, hardly have any room here. I am going to probably time lapse this so that you don't have to see me transferring the stencil and working it around. My my camera is so close to my stencil here that I'm afraid I'm going to bump it all the time. So if I do that, I'm apologizing in advance, but I have to get up once in a while just to make sure everything is in the frame here. Once I have the stencil transferred, I think I'll be okay. I moved my canvas down a little bit because as I was setting up, I have a white, this is just a white canvas as I use, that I use for my background. And when I put my white paper on it, it's hard for me to see uh, where the center of the page is. But now that I have my outline, my stencil outlined, I can see. So it'll be easier instead of having it way, way up there. It'll be more visually pleasing. Let's call it that. I put a circle in, in there just with my pencil, just to, to give me a reference for the eye. Now, like I said, my friends, I am just going to kind of wing this. I'm going to start maybe with some 
big dots with my number four round and then I'm going to go into the medium dots with my number two and then I'll take my smallest one and I'll go from there. And the only thing I want to do is maybe in the snout area here of the seahorse and possibly around the bottom of the tail, the outline of the tail and around here I'm going to put darker colors and that's probably just going to be blue. I'm doing wet on dry for this because I want the dots to always show. So I guess as I go along, why don't I just tell you what I'm using? I'm going to start with Prussian blue because I believe that is the darkest blue that I have. So I'm just going in with my number four brush and I'm just going to put in some dots. Just dots. You see? Just dots. I'm going to do that. This is going to be very therapeutic, I think. And I'm trying to figure out how I can do this without you having my, you know, me doing that constantly, <laughs> banging my, my phone. So I'll try to keep my brush kind of on the side here. I saw this online, there was, um, there was, I can't remember, it was just one of those sites where um, they say like it's, um, I guess where people put their pictures up, you know, like what, what were they called, free pick or, um, yeah, I can't remember now, those sites where you could upload your photos, like Photor, is that possibly one of them? I saw it on there and it was someone who had done an owl like that with all dots and I thought that looks really, really pretty. And then I was kind of looking up dot art <laughs> and I saw that somebody had done this, a seahorse. And I was like, yeah, I want to do a seahorse too. I'm really winging this, okay? Like really winging it. Because for me, I love anything in the sea, but also um, my Celtic birth sign is the seahorse. I'm a Pisces, and the seahorse falls under the, the Pisces zodiac sign for the Celtic zodiac. So I thought that would be really nice, you know, for me to do my, my Celtic birth sign as a little bit of art therapy. I actually have a, um, a seahorse tattoo on my belly. Get in my belly. <laughs> you, if you know me, you know I do kind of weird references once in a while. That's from Austin Powers. <laughs> I have fun here. All right. Just going to keep doing this kind of where I feel like I should put dots or dark dots, because eventually this is going to be filled with dots. And right now, I thought I was going to be using my number four brush to make larger dots, but looks like I'm not really making large dots. I'll go in later. Just wanted to do a fun little painting today. I've been having bouts of insomnia. That's, it's crazy. And you know what insomnia is caused by, for the most part, you know, there could be a physical disorder that you have, but mostly it's because you can't turn your brain off. Something's bothering you, something's worrying you, something upset you. You're thinking about a certain situation over and over, you're remunerating you're pining over someone, you know, anything that keeps your brain going, that causes you not to sleep well. Other things can cause you not to sleep well, like indigestion, you know, like I said, physical things, but for me, it's, um, it's not physical, it's worry. And doing some art therapy always helps me to get out of my head. that an exercise. I've started doing some Tai Chi lately. 
I want to learn all of these sequences in a Tai Chi session, so I've been doing that. Granted, I admit I haven't been doing it consistently, and I should. Haven't we all kind of said that about our health at, at times? Well, I really should have exercised today, but you know what? I had a grilled cheese sandwich instead. <laughs> I actually have said that. I said that to one of my friends once and she laughed so hard. She's like, that's the best excuse I've ever heard for not exercising. <laughs> I had a grilled cheese sandwich instead. But for the Tai Chi, it's just finding the quiet time to learn the moves. Because the moves are they may look easy and they're hard on, not on the body, but you do get, you know, your muscles do work. What I'm doing on off camera is I'm dipping my, the tip of my paintbrush into my water dish and then into my pan. And once I see that the, uh, the paint starts to fade a little bit on the page, I go back and do the same thing. Right now, I guess what I'm doing is outlining the tail area. But I don't want to outline it all. Just certain spots. And at the same time, I'm trying to, in a way, erase my um, graphite outline. You might hear my dog in the background. He's snoring. <laughs> He's snoring really loud. I've said this before. Once I start doing my art videos, my pets all fall asleep. Okay, so far so good. That's all I'm gonna do with the Prussian blue. Let's see, since things are going pretty well, I'm gonna hold on to this number four brush and I'm probably gonna go into, let's see, I'm gonna do some complementary colors. So blue and yellow, I better make sure that there's no blue left on my paintbrush. So I'm dipping into my lemon yellow and I'm going to see what that looks like. I might have a little too much water here. I want to make sure all of this is dry so that I don't... Um... Okay, that looks all right. You can't really see what I'm doing, can you? Let me try it this way. For now, I am not going to touch any of the colors together. I want to show you something. You see my arm? My blue didn't dry at the bottom there, so I should probably wait till it dries before I lay my arm down. I'm just going to take some water and clean that up so that I don't bring blue anywhere else onto the canvas where I don't want it. All right. I probably should have started at the bottom and gone up, but I made my choice. I'm sticking to it. This is an exercise in patience and I don't mind at all today. Sometimes I wonder if I use painting as a form of escapism, you know? That I just don't want to deal with what's going on in my life so I just run to my paints and I lose myself in what I'm doing. I guess it's not really a bad form of this escapism, huh? Mm -hmm. Sometimes 
So what Bob Ross said, whatever makes you happy, put in your world. And in the reverse, whatever doesn't make you happy, remove from your world. You walk your own path in this life, right? It's nice to have friends and people along your path. But if these people cause you strife, pain, stress, hurt, you gotta remove them. I don't know if you can hear the banging going on. There's a woodpecker outside and he's on one of my rain barrels and he's pecking away at it. <laughs> I use the rain barrels as a bird feeder. So I guess there might be some, some seeds left over on top of it and he's trying to open the seed, I think. Okay, the next color I am going to choose is going to be a red color. Now let me see which one I want to choose. I'm going to use a little bit of a darker red. I have a red called Rose Red. It's actually more of a darker pink, depending how much water I put in there. And again, I'm going to be careful here not to touch the yellow. And I want to do a little bit of outlining where I didn't put any blue. Or maybe along with the blue. So like I said, this is called Rose Red. But if you're doing this, you can choose whatever color you have. I mean, it doesn't even have to be close to the colors I'm choosing. You could also do it all in one color. You can make your dots big. So, do you have something in your life that's not bringing you happiness that you need to remove, but you're not quite there yet? A lot of people stay in uh, unhappy relationships because they don't have the courage to end them. I was like that for a long time. I didn't have the courage to end an unhealthy relationship and I was able to do it and it's still stressful, you know. It, nobody wants to end a relationship because it's not always bad, right? There are good things, there are good memories, good points about the other person. Sometimes the out the bad outweighs the good and you have to finally find your courage and your dignity and say to yourself, this is not making me happy and I have to admit it. It's hard to admit. And I'm sure that's the source of my insomnia lately. The healing process takes a long time, you know. I'm just gonna put a big dot there. And <laughs> makes it look like she's a she. It looks like she has eyelashes. You know, there are other things in your life that might not be making you happy, like a bad habit. Could be causing you problems digesting your food or something you're eating is giving you headaches. Habits are hard to break, you know? We have to be super, super motivated. we become accustomed to things and 
it almost seems too difficult to change sometimes, doesn't it? It's like, oh, it's easier staying in the rut and feeling the pain, which is so weird, but so many of us have done that. My phone likes to shut off if I leave it on too long. And I could be painting and talking and giving you so many words of wisdom. <laughs> and my phone decides, no, I don't want to hear you anymore, Rain. Shuts down. <laughs> I don't even hear it. I have such an old phone, I have to get a new one. It's, um, how old is it? Almost 10 years old, but that's not the problem. It's, I've dropped it so many times that I can't even turn it off anymore. It's ridiculous. The power button doesn't work. If I turn it off, sometimes it won't turn back on and I have to go in with a, a pin and find the spot where you do the factory reset and I lose everything and ugh. Not to mention the little hissy fits that it throws when it wants to turn itself off. <laughs> just mixing not mixing I'm just adding red to the blue at the bottom because I kind of want the tail to be the darkest area up here in the snout too so I might add some more of that darker red here probably go back in with the Prussian blue after too and I'll just put a few little spots of red pulling up from the snout onto the face There was a time for me back in, geez, how long ago it was, in the mid to late 2000s, I was having the most horrendous pain any time I ate. It was just awful. I couldn't figure out what was hurting me. And I went to a general pra practitioner, doctor, because you can't just go see a specialist where I live. You have to see a general practitioner and they have to give you a reference and then you have to call and wait and ugh, it's a whole sy stupid system. Um, so I was referred to a gastroenterologist. And the waiting list was two years, <laughs> believe it or not two years to see a specialist and I was at the point where I was on my knees on the ground curled up in pain every time I would eat it was just I, like I can't even describe how horrible the pain was it got to the point where I didn't want to eat anymore and I was losing weight and I was getting dehydrated and it was really really bad and I decided to go back to the same general practitioner and I said look this is kind of urgent I may have to go to the emergency one of these days because sometimes I can't breathe the pain is so bad and he's like well you know you probably have IBS that's irritable bowel syndrome I'm like, what do you mean probably? He's like, well, you have all the symptoms for it and I'm pretty sure that the gastroenterologist is gonna tell you the same thing. And I was like, okay, so what do I do about it? I'm just gonna start using some cadmium orange as I speak, okay? So I asked the doctor, what am I supposed to do about it? And he said, there's no cure. You just have to live with it. And I think my jaw could not have hit the ground fast enough. Like, are you flipping kidding me, Mr. Doctor? I just have to live with it. And I actually said to him, you're kidding, right? And he's like, no, there's no cure for it. You just have to live with it. And I said, but I can't eat without writhing on the ground in pain. And he said, well, you just have to wait to see the gastroenterologist, but that's my diagnosis. You have IBS. And 
I remember leaving the doctor's office bawling my eyes out because there was no way I was going to endure that kind of pain. And I called the gastroenterologist and I spoke to the, the receptionist and I told her how bad it was. And she, she was not very nice. She said, well, there's nothing I can do. You just have to wait for your appointment or go to, go to the emergency. And I just was like, oh, wow, nobody cares. <laughs> I am going to have to heal myself. So, as Bob Ross said, whatever makes you happy, put in your world. And like I said, whatever doesn't make you happy, remove from your world. And I was definitely going to remove that pain. I was convinced it was something that I was eating. It wasn't that, you know, my whole digestive system was out of whack. It had to be something I was eating. So I decided to go on an elimination diet. And those things can be long. Mine lasted just under a year. And I was saying before, you know, sometimes we stay in our comfortable ruts until we can't take it anymore. And that was an instance where I couldn't take it anymore. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and be my own doctor. And I switched to a vegan diet, cut out all animal products. I cut out alcohol, sugar, and gluten. And throughout the process, I found it very challenging to figure out how to eat because I found out I had an intolerance to soy, so I couldn't eat tofu for protein. And I wasn't having any animal products, including dairy. I had a very difficult time digesting beans. I got my protein from brown rice powder <laughs> that I bought at the health food store. It tasted so gross, but I needed protein. You know, you can't just exist on bread and vegetables. So, plus I wasn't eating gluten, so that was a challenge as well. And I found out I had an intolerance to nuts. I can eat them once in a while, but if I eat too many, I'm in big trouble digestively. So what it came down to is I had a food intolerance to the protein in milk products called casein, in cow milk products that is, and only in grocery store brands of um, milk, cream, and cheese. And it took me I was into my 11th month when I finally figured that out. Because when you do an elimination diet, what you do is you take everything out that could be causing you pain. And I did a lot of research online and that's how I figured out how to do it. And uh, even yeast, that was another thing I pulled out of my diet too, no yeast. And then what you do is you introduce things a little bit at a time. You know, like if I was reintroducing yeast, I would make a bread that had yeast in it. And then I would eat it, wait two or three days to see how my body reacted. And if I was fine, great. I would continue to um, consume it. And then, you know, I would try having an egg white. Do the same thing. Wait to see how my body reacted for a few days, if it was okay. Try the egg yolk. Egg yolks are a big no-no for me. That's another one I found out. I can't eat egg yolks. But it was mainly the casein molecule in grocery store brand milk products and cheese. So, go figure. I almost said go finger. Weird, eh? Yes, doctor, you're right. I will have to live with it. <laughs> there is no way. Have you guys ever been through anything like that? It's so frustrating. I mean, I, I don't want to say it's almost like they don't care, but I know that they're busy and everything, but 
I'm sure if it were them or their family member, they wouldn't just brush it off like, oh, you just have to live with it. You know what I mean? This is looking pretty good. Checking out my time, I'm okay. My phone's not gonna have a little hissy fit. I wanna put some green and purple in here too. Maybe some light blue as well. I didn't think I would be patient enough to do this, but it's actually quite relaxing. All right, next up, let's try some green. I'm going to probably do a darker green, hooker, hooker's green. Yeah, I'm going to do a hooker's green. It may not come out as dark, too dark on the, on the canvas, but let's see. Probably start down here. Oh yeah, it's a little dark down here. Oh, I just want to tell anyone listening right now, um, I have a delivery on the way, so if there's a knock on the door, you're going to hear the dogs barking. And it will be loud. <laughs> and because this is real life, I'm going to leave it in the video. The snoring, the barking, the water drinking, the meowing, you're getting it all. <laughs> Another thing that I realized a couple of years ago was that any kind of caffeinated coffee, no matter the small amount, terribly increased my anxiety. I never thought it could. I mean, okay, I know that caffeine kind of wakes you up and gets your heart pumping and stuff like that. but. I used to have one little cup of coffee every morning and the anxiety would usually come around dinner time. So I never made the connection. But one day I decided that I was going to switch to decaf and see what happened. And not all of my anxiety was gone, but that daily dinner time anxiety that used to pop up, never again. So I don't touch caffeinated coffee anymore. I do have some caffeine when I eat chocolate products and once in a while I'll have a cup of tea, but um, it's the caffeine, not the teine they call it. Maybe that's just in French, they call it teine instead of caffeine. But yeah, what a difference. You gotta try stuff once in a while to see, you know? And for years, I couldn't make, I just couldn't make the connection. But I gotta say, I'm really glad I did because I don't like feeling anxiety, especially when you don't know where it's coming from, you know? Okay, if you're taking a test or if you're starting a job or driving in the rain at night when it's like, you know, the headlights in your face, I can't stand that. That makes me nervous and I feel anxiety then, but when it just pops out of nowhere, I mean, I do have what's called post-traumatic stress disorder and that, that happens too. But this particular anxiety, I was able to figure out it came from coffee, caffeinated coffee. All right, I think I'm gonna switch to a lighter green. It's called yellow green. I have to clean it up a bit because I got some of my red in there. And I don't wanna create a brown color at all. How are you guys doing? Are you having fun with your dots? <laughs> I hope so. I'm gonna put the lighter green in between 
a darker hooker's green. So this is, like I said, yellow green. In betwixt. <laughs> In betwixt the dark green. I still want to do light blue and purple. And I'm debating if I should do some larger dots as well. I'm definitely going to make her eye bigger. Yes, I've decided she's a she. And I might go back and just do a second layer of everything. I don't know. <laughs> My dog Jack. It's a rainy day here and I have the heat on. I hate putting the heat on this time of year, but I don't like being cold either. And the heat, and I guess my voice is putting my, my dog into a really deep sn sleep where he's snoring so loudly. <laughs> I'm just going through a major transformation in my life recently. Everything's changing for me. My living arrangements are changing. My finances have changed a little bit. I've changed um, a lot of my goals. I've been working a lot with my spiritual side and working on forgiveness and healing and really, really trying to heal past traumas and past hurts. Hey, what should I put in there? I'm eyeing my little purple color here. It's called Deep Violet. So I'm going to try for the Deep Violet. Let's see how dark that, that is. Oh, that's nice. bit up here too because purple and orange and yellow are nice complementary colors. Just a little bit. I'm going to go back into my rose red and just fill in her eye. There we go. I'm going to let that dry and I'll come back to it. All right, so I allowed everything to dry. There's just a little bit of red that's still wet there in the eye of the seahorse. So what I've decided to do was just randomly put some larger dots. And I'm gonna start with my yellow, my lightest color, lemon yellow. And I'm just going around and I'm gonna put some larger dots. And it might cover some of the, the other ones, but that's all right. I just want it to be a little more interesting. And see what happened there was um, the blue and the yellow mixed. Even though it's dry, the 
just such a small amount of paint on there. I'm going to stick to the yellow areas, I think. And the orange areas. Or I'll just dot them. That way I don't mix everything all together. And I'm going to do this with all of the colors. Just randomly put in some large dots. Okay, that'll be enough right now for the yellow. I'm going to go from light to dark, so I'll go with the cadmium orange now. And wherever I had cadmium orange, I'll put some larger, larger dots. so that I don't, you know, go like that so you can't see. It's hard for me to make dots. <laughs> but I'm going to take my time. Maybe a few here. So when you think about whatever makes you happy, put it in your world. What do you think about? How can you make your life happier? How can you make your world happier? Because you know, we only live once on this earth, right? Blue doesn't want to stay on the canvas. All right, I'm going to gently dot, make a large dot from little ones. I'll go with the red now, that rose red. Same thing, just adding some larger dots here and there. starting a painting without having any idea what I'm doing. I just came in with the idea of dots and had the stencil that I found. I'm just going to rinse off my brush because I got some blue in there again. You know, I, I wanted to put some light blue too, so I'll have to go in later and figure out where I'm going to put that in. I'm wondering if I should put large dots on all the points of her tail. You know, like that. And I am mixing with the blue right now. I think that looks nice. I'll do that for the whole uh, tail here. Gives it a little bit of an outline. It almost looks like a decoration. <laughs> I don't have 
bit of water. There we go. Nice. Maybe up here too. I'll do the same thing on her. On her scales up here. mixing with the blue and it's kind of making a dark purple, which is nice. Okay, now you know what? I'm going to go into the light blue. I am going to use what's called turkey blue. I'll show you what it looks like. Hold on. You see, it's not bright bright, but it's a lighter blue than the Prussian blue almost like a peacock blue, but in my pan it's called turkey blue. Did I just move my canvas? Okay. I'm going to go in right away and put some large dots. I love the way blue and green look together. I often mix them. Not together, but you know, next to each other, complementary to each other. I know that they're not complementary colors, but I think they look fabulous together. I'll put a few more of the small dots here and there. Just anywhere I have the green. this to be a nice colorful painting. When there's a lot of color, it makes me happy. <laughs> and you know, blue and orange are, I mentioned it before, they're really nice complementary colors. So this is going to look really nice, not only with the green, but with the orange that's here in the tail. I'm just going to put a few little spots because the tail's getting pretty filled up with color there. There. I'm going to add some more large dots of that turkey blue. Alright, I think I'm going to go into the purple, deep violet, for some large dots of purple. Purple goes well with orange. Don't want to mix those colors together though. Maybe over here in her snout. I'm hearing a car. May or may not be my delivery, so watch your ears. <laughs> Just in case. Depends on the delivery person. Sometimes they knock, sometimes they don't. I think that the head needs a little bit more orange, so I'm going to go into the cadmium orange. I'm going to put some large dots. Or medium size, I guess they are. I don't know if they're large. I'm 
And where else can I put some? I'll put some small dots here. The light turkey blue isn't completely dry, so I want to be careful that they don't blend together. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and I'll come back to it with some green. While the inside of my seahorse is drying, I'm going to put a few dots around her. Not completely. Sometimes I do splatter, but this time I don't want to do splatter. I just want to take that turkey blue, that nice, beautiful, light turkey blue, and just do a few, you know, I don't want it to be a real, you know, outline-ish type of thing. I want there to be some... Just things like that around so it doesn't look like it's um, a big outline you know especially maybe around the points but not every one of them under here too Do you see the difference? It just kind of makes it look less like um, like a stenciled outline, which I guess it is. <laughs> you know, it just makes it look maybe a little more loose or messy or whatever you want to call it. But pretty good. Now it's not completely, completely dry on the inside, but I am going to go into the, let's see, that yellow green, the lighter green that I have, and I'm going to make a few of the large dots there. I asked you before, what, what brings you, you know, what makes you happy that you want to put in your world? And I was thinking about that as I turned the camera off before. And I have several card decks, and I have one called the Famous, Ar Famous Art Oracle Deck. And this is a card that I have out all the time. The painting is The Girl with the Pearl Earring, right, by jo Johan Vernier. But look at the message. Harmony at home. Honestly, harmony at home for me, that is what makes me happy and what I want to put in my world. And that's what I strive for, harmony at home. All of my decisions that I make always have that in mind. Harmony at home. Because when I feel peace in my own home, I feel confident, I feel secure. Nothing can touch me that can hurt me. I feel good. I feel creative, you know? So harmony at home, which means 
ridding my home of toxicity in all forms. And that's the journey that I was taking this year in 2023. Not was, I'm still taking, is ridding my home of anything that brings any negativity or toxicity because it's not worth it to me. And that includes people and that includes things. Kind of let go of a few friendships recently that were a little toxic. This summer I'm working on decluttering, getting rid of all the clutter, things that have been sitting in boxes, accumulating, giving off negative energy. I just don't want that anymore. I want to simplify. Even my wardrobe. I'm going to be giving a lot away to charity when I start the decluttering process. My land as well. I bought my house three years ago and there are areas of my land that have... Let's, I'm just going to tell you, garbage. The people who owned this house before if you're listening, I'm sorry, but the truth hurts. You guys were pigs. You just... The state of the house when I got it was disgusting. There was garbage everywhere, and in the shed there was... It took me... I had to hire a dump truck to remove all the garbage. It was disgusting, and... Some of that garbage is still sitting on certain areas of my land, and that's causing me disharmony, and I want to get rid of it. So this is the year I'm going to be working on that, too. big year for me to find harmony in my life and harmony in my home because this is where I live. This is my home. I don't want to be anywhere else. There we go. Well, my friends, I think I'm pretty happy with this. So I hope that this painting made you happy. Remember, Whatever makes you happy, you put it in your world. And whatever doesn't make you happy, remove it. Find your harmony. Do some painting. Bring a lot of color into your life and enjoy yourselves. Thank you so much for being here, my friends. If you enjoyed this, please leave me a comment. I love reading your comments. And I do reply to them. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time on Rain Francis Art. Bye.